Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Tech Talk for Accountants show, and I'm your host, Andrew Lassis, with RightWorks, IT specializing in the accounting field. And with us today, I am very pleased to introduce Janelle Cherrier from JCL Strategies Limited, and we're going to talk about her journey. We're going to discuss growth strategies, scheduling saying no to clients, which I know is a big obstacle for a lot of people. Having boundaries is definitely one of one of my follies. So I know I'm going to be learning a lot on the show, but Janelle, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. So tell me a little bit about your sort of your journey. Like where did you start and how did you get to uh, where you are now? Yeah. So I did sales for the longest time, like commission sales. And then I got really tired of dealing with people in that capacity because it was just overwhelming and tiring. So then I decided to go to college and I got my business admin diploma with my major in accounting. Then I thought I wanted to be an accountant. So then I went and worked at an accounting firm and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do my things to be an accountant. Then I started working with accountants. I was like, "Ah, I don't want to be an accountant. So then I worked in the bookkeeping department and I basically like overhauled the way that we did bookkeeping in that department. And then I decided that instead of working for somebody else, I could probably do this on my own since I was the one basically running the show there. So then that's how JCL started. So with you running the show, what did your overhaul look like? In my head, I'm thinking it was old school. And then you were like, by the way, apps exist. 100%. Yeah. So they use Adagio. Do you know what that is? I'm not familiar. So that's like, it looks like, I don't even know how to describe it, but like everything you had to do both sides all the time of the, your, like your debits and your credits all the time. And there was nothing automated. Everything was very manual. Clients were bringing in their stuff like three months later, and then we would do it off bank statements. And I'm like this week, there has to be a better way. So then I had known QuickBooks online. So I was like, why aren't we using this instead? They're like, because our clients won't do it. I was like, have we shown them? And they're like, so then we show them QuickBooks online. And then we do WagePoint and we do Dex and we introduce a whole bunch of apps. And then we're like, oh, this works better. So then we slowly get away from the other stuff and that's what they were using. So it was much better. It's funny how... It really takes one person and then, you know, once you introduce the, here is the better way to do things like, for instance, uh, my VP was out last week, so I had to do her job and a whole bunch of it. Like my brain is always like, how do we streamline? How do we automate? And she's very much like, I have my own system. Don't mess with it. Yeah. And, And so like she comes back today. And I was like, by the way, I automated like seven pieces of your job because I hate doing this. And like when you go on vacation next year and I have to do your job, (laughs) I don't want to have to do any of this. So you're welcome. And it works because I've spent the last week testing it over and over. And I doubt she'll be like, undo it, undo (laughs) my automation, right? Like once they see it and experience it and see that it's not as horrible as they want it to be, that's the line I like. It's never going to be as bad as you want it to be. No. And like, especially when we have those clients that would bring in like a year's worth of data and like, we'd have to do it manually. Like let's hook up QBO. Let's get their bank statements as a PDF, convert them, and then create a bunch of rules so that we don't have to do half the work. That's pretty simple. Right. And especially when it's like very specific compliance stuff where it's like every time you see this, and I mean, a lot of businesses, it's the same thing over and over. So yeah. creating rules, you know, is half the battle. Yeah. And so like, why do you have to think about it each time? Work? 100%. Yeah. yeah. And like in Canada, we have things like differently than in the States. So all our accounting is for the most part accrual. So that adds a level of complexity, I guess, than the U.S. does have, which makes we can't just stick rules for everything. Right. So, but if you're doing, if you're coming in with a box of things at the end of the year, the years are pretty gone. What are we going to do? Right. So like when we catch you up and we're up to date with things and we make sure it's accurate and correct. And we have to have like receipts for most things. Cause if CRA comes at you, you're going to, they're going to want those receipts. So things are just 
slightly more complicated than in the States, which most people don't understand. So Canadian accounting is different. Canadian accounting different. So, so you go out on your own and then probably you probably had a couple. Oh, I took this for granted. Like for me, sales and marketing, it was like, I'm really good yeah. at tech. And then it was like, oh, you know, I can't do any work without, yeah. like you had experience in sales. I was just like yeah. some guy that was like, oh, I thought fixing computers was enough. <laughs> Luckily, I had probably 12 clients follow me. Perfect. So that's like, I was okay. And then what happened was I was like, but I'm bored because I don't have enough work. And then Intuit called me, or I somehow got a hold of Intuit and I started working with Intuit for, I worked with Intuit for two years. I was a service delivery manager. So I helped accountants move their stuff over from other platforms into QuickBooks Online. And then just if they had issues with apps and whatnot, connecting things, I would help them with that too, because I had the experience. So then I just got too busy with my own stuff in the two years that I worked there. So I stopped working at Intuit. And then I had to hire people to help me with JCL because I just got too busy. And so as it started growing, did you, what were your thoughts and visions of it when you first started? Was it just going to be you and you get to do what you like? I mean, my, my vision of what I wanted changed so much over the last decade, but I'm curious of yours. Yeah, I wanted to go on my own because I wanted to be able to like decide. Because I, when I worked at the accounting firm, you said yes to everybody. There was, you weren't allowed to say no. Everybody had to walk in the door. You had to help them. And I was like, I don't really like that because I don't want to work with everybody. Like, just like, if they're like, I don't want to use QuickBooks Online, we still had to help them. And I'm like, no, I'm really good with QuickBooks and that's what we're going to use. If you don't want to use it, then I'm not the person for you. Not everyone is going to work well together and that's okay. There's other people for that. So my biggest thing was I wanted to be in charge of who I wanted to work with and how I wanted to work with them. And when you don't have to jump in every single direction and you can hone in, like you get better at what you do Absolutely. and the deeper you dive, the more you learn more and more about what you're doing. And I'm sure like in the last 365 days, you have maybe learned something that you hadn't known prior yeah yeah you learn stuff because those are your dedicated tools you're gonna learn how to use them better every single day yeah you're in it. whereas right. like if you're using like 17 different platforms that's excessive but like let's say four you still have that's still a lot to have to learn you can't master that all not well anyways right and most people are going to be on one of the platforms anyway just yeah. the way that 80 20 dictates it and, you know, when we started niching into the accounting world and then started realizing that it is a even more broad world, like in retrospect, I probably wouldn't have called it tech for accountants. It probably would have been like tech for bookkeepers or like a different, like a tech for tax pros or something or like two different departments because yes. they are so different. And then there's different types under each subcategory. So like Absolutely. the more you learn, the more valuable you become. Yeah. And, but that can't happen when you're doing accountants and dentists and yeah. chiropractors and residential and gas stations and e-commerce, you know, for yeah. us, it's like, okay, we can learn all of these different things that all have different, we're never going to get good at one thing, which then right. turns into commoditization. And then it's a race to the bottom. So yeah. who was the first client you said no to? It was some like random industry that like I didn't, I didn't know anything about and I didn't have any other clients on. So I was just like, the other part of having like random things all the time is that I have to train my staff to do it. Right. And if they don't have any, like we're going to do it like we do so-and-so. Well, we're starting fresh on this one. We're starting fresh on this one. We're starting. That's a lot. to have to remember all the processes for it all. And so now we're through a stage where we have one of you. I got to let you go because I can't keep hire. I can't keep hiring staff and trying to train them on this one that they only work on once a week and then for to remember everything. Yeah. And then the one person leaves 
And yeah. then you have to train someone else on something that you're not that well versed in. Yeah. And there isn't an easy line of communication for other people that have expertise within it. So it, you're spending all this time on something that, you know, they're not compensating you extra for not knowing how to yeah. do your job as well as yep. someone else could. So yeah. being able to see the big picture where it's not like, oh, well, but I lose a client. It's okay. Every I, time I lose a client, client. Yeah. Another door opens. There's always going to be someone else that needs bookkeeping. Always. You just got to find the right people that work with you. That's like, I had one the other day. They're like, um, remember we're in January now. I'm not, I don't do taxes, but January to March is still my busiest time of year because of all the December year ends I have. And I had someone reach out and be like, I would like you to do my bookkeeping. Everything from 2023 is in a shoebox, ready to go. And I'm like, no, I cannot take you because A, I don't take cleanups in January because that's not fair to my other clients because I want to focus on them and get their stuff done because we've been doing it all year long. I can't just put someone else on pause to help you because you didn't do anything all year. So reach back out in March if you want and we can look at it then, but I am not doing this for you so uh, having those boundaries do you have them just sort of in your head or is it like a documented hard and fast <laughs> feeling? In my head, there's still a lot of things in my head that we need to get on paper because we're trying to find ourselves an accounting manager so that they can oversee bookkeeping and make sure everything works together and i want that person to be able to take on some of this role also but that means that things need to get out of my head not paper but well, we're working on it, but there's a lot of things in my head. You know what the great thing though about putting it on paper is once it's I there know. and know. like, you know, then the question is like, will you be at your company longer than they will? Yeah. Because it's kind of naive to think that one person will be with you forever. Like my VP has been with me for like eight years. So yeah. like she knows how to do everything, right. but that was eight years of learning and understanding nuance yes. like that's I would never expect that and you know, we were talking for the show like 700 ish employees of over the course of 10 years and like she's the one that has stuck I mean there have been a couple people have been for multiple years we have some people for like five six years also but it's like that's not the norm right somewhere Absolutely. So yeah. having it on paper, you know, if we had to replace somebody having the yeah. processes, procedures of here's the document. And even if it's still, it's not current or up to date, you still have a framework to yes. go off of. And so getting it out of your head on the paper, it also helps you kind of declutter because in your head, it's just like, oh, like this and that. And then it's like, you write it on paper and it's like, these two things are opposite I know I'm I just I had an admin assistant and then when she left and then we had to add another one and so now she's going through all the processes that the other one went through but we have it all written down so I don't have to teach all the things over again it's just written down so now as I'm doing things that I know I'm going to want someone else to do I'm writing it down so it's written but it's still a process to have to get there right Right. Remember to write it down because for us, it can, it's so natural to just, that's just what I do. But now you write down all the steps, you're like, oh, that's a lot of steps to do that one thing. Right. right? Yeah. You don't realize it. when you're So just as you have grown and you, you understand, so we have established having processes, procedures helps you to scale the organization, yeah. doing a good job for your clients. Yeah. Also, will definitely go a long way, especially in something, you know, that's a recurring piece of your business. You have yeah. the processes, procedures, do it over and over. And like the first person is like, okay, yeah, just watch me forever. And through osmosis, you'll figure you'll it out eventually. Yeah. Right. And then it's like, oh, I can't keep doing that. Like we had to hire like five salespeople last year. And after I trained the first one or no, no the second one, so I trained the first one. And then yeah. the second one comes in and it was like, I'm doing the same thing I did with right. the other person. So it was like, and we had it written now, but it was like for the way that we used to do things. And so it was like, I'm just going to record the, cause we're a remote team. So we do it yeah. like you and I are on zoom right now. So yeah. I just recorded it 
and then cut it up edited and you could watch it on like 2x speed so someone could get pretty much the same information that someone else got just me saying this is what i do this is what i do yeah. this is what i do but you condense it make it faster and cut out the oh wait no no, no never mind you get get things totally. yeah streamlined yeah. and better. So as you're, as you grow the company, what are some of the other lessons that you've learned or pieces that you've put in place? So we're learning to say no to clients, have your way of doing things, getting it documented so that yeah. other people can do your way so that you yeah. get to do more high value things. What are some of the other things that you've come across? The other thing that we found really helpful is having clients on certain days of the week. So we work on client Y every single Monday. So that, that client knows that they need to have all their stuff submitted for the week on Monday because that's when we're working on it. And if they don't, then their stuff, they can't pull any reports to see how they're doing for the week. So that's a huge thing. And then that also helps us with capacity. We can figure out, okay, we can put like a couple more people on these days. It's just super helpful. And everyone knows this gets done on Monday. This gets done on Tuesday. The clients know, we know it's not a guessing game. Oh, when are we going to work on whoever? No, Mondays. We get an email, we, we put it as a task, and then we know to work on that on Monday. Simple enough. But again, we're coming to processes and procedures, whereas a lot of people just sort of fly by the seat of their pants, yeah. live in their inbox, which I've been guilty of for a super long time yeah. until I, I did like a... I don't know if experiment's the right word, but I just retroactively looked at all the emails in my inbox and how many things in a month were mission critical, needed a less than two hour response. And I set the threshold of there, it would be a $10,000 consequence if we did not get it within yeah. the two hours of an email being sent. So not like I called you three times and you didn't pick up, but yeah. just email and it never happened. There right. was not one mission critical thing that could not have waited 24 hours. There were a couple of things that was like, okay, it's good that I got this. Now I could forward it appropriately. You know, there were a handful of things and I set up a bunch of filters and rules. And, yeah. but if you don't reflect on what's actually going on and you just sort of the inbox, I think is one of the biggest enemies for productivity because it, something pops up. It's like, Ooh, I know. what is this? I, I turned off my notifications off my inbox. Smart. So like, I don't, I have, I don't have it on my screen. I don't have it come up on my phone. I don't have notifications for my email at all. I generally check it like three times a day and that's it. And I often I'll work at night because that's when like the dogs are quiet. Everyone's quiet. So I'll work at night, but I don't send out emails at night. I'll auto schedule it for the next morning. Yeah, that's the move. Cause otherwise people are expecting, hey, right. Last time you sent me an eleven PM email. Yeah. It's like, oh and like I have a hard cutoff for every like everything for like our staff. It's like we don't send out emails after four. We don't send them out before nine. Our office hours are four are nine to four. That's when we send emails. Anything else we can send later. Also, you open up not only not having those boundaries but if someone sends it at say five o'clock and yeah. nobody's following their inbox then the person on the other side is like what you just sent this to me i replied right back and then you don't reply yeah. until so yeah. having yeah. things especially you know in in like the early on stages where it's like you're fully capable of just doing everything at all times. Like yeah. it's not a, oh man, I couldn't do that. But you know, it's like, talk to your former self. The about... one thing that I, yeah. Like the one thing that I really wish I would have done initially is got myself like a business number. So I didn't do that off the hop and I was using my personal number. And then like clients are texting me on the weekend and it's not like I can just ignore it because I just can't ignore it and then I couldn't you couldn't mark something as unread then I would just forget about it so then I just I had to get myself a different phone number so I converted my what was my old personal number into my business number and then I just got a new business number yeah, a friend new, of mine did the same thing right so then I can have boundaries if you text or call after four you'll get a message then we're close and you know what people on the other side 
they respect it. And I don't, I can't think of a time where it was like, oh man, I did it outside of office hours and they didn't bend or fold for right. me. But there's no such thing as an accounting emergency. Like that's not a thing. Never. But in the small business owner's mind, a lot of times when things rise and fall on you and it's like, well, I pride myself on great customer service. So that means you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, because I'm so capable of handling those things. And when you have yeah. just a handful of clients and you know them on a personal level, you yeah. know, it's more than just here's a name and number and I don't know much about you other than like your transaction history yeah. and like your bank feeds. You know where and... you like to go to eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, once it starts growing to that level though, I mean, you can really start focusing on scaling and actually growing your business. So I'm going to go out on a limb here. Is time blocking something that you do at all? I try really hard. Sometimes I get distracted. So we have a service called Review and Reconcile. So the clients do their own bookkeeping and then we review and we reconcile. So I time block for certain things that I'm the only one that can do it. So that nothing, no meetings get booked or anything, but time block for certain things because I'm the only one that can do it and I need to get it done. And if I yeah. time block, I get it done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we were discussing earlier about how after the acquisition, I learned that there was so much stuff that was just like Andrew only, not the fulfillment. <laughs> So like marketing, we have someone that I taught him everything I know. He's great at it. Yeah. So the opportunities come in. Sales, taught the salesman everything I know. They can take the opportunity from marketing, close yeah. the deal, get it to tech and customer service and do the fulfillment. And that, I mean, we've been doing, it, it evolves over time. Like in tech, if we were still doing the same thing we were doing 10 years ago, we'd probably not be <laughs> yeah some of the stuff that we used to have to do versus now it's just like oh my gosh like I know. we've like streamlined and automated like many jobs like we yeah. do better now with 12 full-time employees and now it's like departments and but we'll just pretend that this conversation yeah. was october we do better yeah. with 12 employees top line and bottom line than we did when we had 50 employees in six offices before covid that's quite the difference so streamlining and having processes and procedures and yeah. the way you do things. And then it just kind of turns into its own kind of machine, which opens you up to be like, yeah. hey, I can do stuff that I feel right. like doing and not yeah. hate my life, which I think every small business owner, if you're doing it right, has to hit that. the I hate my life. Something has I to know. change moment. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of gotten there. I don't do much bookkeeping anymore. I do a lot of cleanups though, because I really like doing that. I like making things, from, taking things from like disaster to make it really pretty. I like doing that. I also really want to work with apps. So work with apps to try and help them and their product to be what we need it to be, because I know what it needs to be. As a and that's, oh, yeah. yeah. And that's such a better way of looking at things versus like what the app wants you to want yeah. and yeah. dig into it. And that was definitely something that we learned along the way where our tech stack used to be, here's all the great bells and whistles. And once you learn it, you yeah. will love it. And then our clients right. kept saying, I don't want to learn it. Yeah. I just want it to work. And we're like, but once you learn it, you'll love it. And they're like, I don't no. want to learn no. it. Yeah. Listen yeah. to the client. And then you know, now part yeah. of our process, it's like, and the great thing is you don't have to learn anything. And they're like, oh, thank God. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. we understand what they actually want versus, yeah. you know, if I'm talking to a tech person where it's like, we got all the bells and whistles and it's like, which bells and whistles you got? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me more. But there, yeah. but then we just want, I just want something that works. So right. I want to work with apps so that when they bring, when they come out with stuff, it's like, yeah, that's actually what we want. I don't need some pretty thing that I can change the font. I need to know that this works in the way I need it to work. And with being in Canada, it just adds our taxes apparently are the end of the world for app people. So let's just make sure it works properly. So like, how do we make sure that we're good in Canada? How you make sure you're good in Canada. So on very high level things, yeah. what you need to do is, especially for when you're dealing with other customers bank feeds hmm. you want to make sure that 
all of the apps that you're using, since most people are doing cloud-based SaaS, you want to make sure that everything has a two-factor authentication on it because what most people do is everyone knows I need a long password. I need it to be unique and I need to have a bunch of characters and stuff. And it's like, but I prefer the password Janelle one, two, three. And it's like, you need a character Janelle one, two, three exclamation mark. Yeah. Got it. So what people end up doing is they use the same password on QuickBooks as they do on the Justin Bieber fan site. And <laughs> then the Justin Bieber fan site gets hacked and the hackers have Janelle one, two, three exclamation mark. And if there isn't two factor authentication, none of it's really your fault, except for you used the same password in two different spots. But even if you did, if there's two factor authentication on it, yeah. you're stopping that threat from getting in. Another thing that people, they really take for granted, but they don't, it doesn't click until it's too late is that everyone, you should be having different unique passwords. There's tons of password managers out there. You should use it, have unique passwords, but especially on your email inbox, which a lot of people, that's my email where you're going to see what I'm doing with my clients. No, but if your bank is connected to your inbox and you go to the bank and say, forgot password and they have access to your email. Well, now you can reset yeah. it right there. So okay. some of the things that people, it's just, that's my inbox. Like what's in there. That's so private. Uh, you'll right. see my back and forth with a client. Like that's not yeah. good, but it's not, you know, we're not sending bank information. Well, you know, your clients aren't supposed to be <laughs> sending yeah. their email, but we, we all know how like a portal yeah. is really just so you can check the box saying that you have a portal. And then people are like, I silly. love that you have a portal. Here's what I'm going to do. Exactly. I'm going to take a picture of my documents and send it to you in Facebook messenger. Yes. And then you could just figure it out. Yeah. You can put, you can figure out where you want that, how you want that. Yeah. But here's the information. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so those are two big and easy ones. And then there's a whole lot of security software, security awareness training is another thing that I think is really just kind of overlooked. And this is coming from someone that runs a cybersecurity company, right? right? And like we have security awareness training for our employees who day in and day out get the nightmare, I clicked on a thing and yeah. now everything's gone. And we don't do the training just so I, I like a client isn't the first one that tells them about it. And they're like, oh yeah, I heard about you getting screwed over by doing this. Yeah. But it's because things are happening and changing so fast. And especially now with AI, that's just opened up a whole other universe yeah. of ways that that they can get in. But just now they have like a really smart one that I've just recently started seeing is they send a QR code mm -hmm. in the email and it's like, I'll just use your phone to do it. And right. so people, you know, like they're less likely to have their guard up on a QR code. It's just, it's different than how they yeah. usually do stuff. So yeah. you send them to a phishing site through a QR code. If they're not checking the URL, you know, you're not going to be getting Chrome saying like, this is a scam, yeah. don't do it. So being aware that these things exist, really, I mean, you could have all the software in the world, but it's the best, the best way to prevent these things from happening is that someone sees a, an email that looks peculiar we see this a lot during tax season where people will say, hey, I just moved into the area and I was in an accident. So like, it's really hard for me to talk on the phone. So e <laughs> emails, emails the best, but are you taking on new clients? And then you say, well, sure I am. I need your tax documents from the last couple of years. Sure, here you go. And it's last year's tax documents, but it's actually a virus. 
encrypts everything, send us Bitcoin ransom. So these are things where really the awareness is the best piece of security you can have. Because if it never gets clicked, then you don't have to have all, I mean, you should still have it. So like saying like, oh yeah, if you're really good with your parachute, you don't even need a backup. Don't, don't even waste your time packing it. Like this first one. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's a lot to think about. And like, they're, right. they're coming up with new things all the time. I get text messages all the time saying like, your delivery is, uh, your delivery has failed. And it's like from FedEx. I mean, from FedEx? Or it's like, remember to accept your e-transfer. Right? I <laughs> that's not from them that's not from anything but like old ladies are clicking on those you know they are and then all their stuff is gone yeah and then they're like yeah the guy from microsoft called me and, right you know like i went to cvs and i bought 500 dollars in google play cards, cards. you know yeah. you know yeah. how people usually conduct business with legitimate companies yeah. Yeah. but i mean they're good they're convincing but Having people aware that these threats exist and have their guard up on them is, it's so, it's not sexy, I think is the problem. It's not like, oh, well, we have this. And I mean, we have all the, the sexy, right? And cybersecurity <laughs> software. Yeah. Like we have the stuff where it's like, oh, it uses like AI detection algorithms to notice <laughs> peculiar things that happen on the computer and it yeah. isolates it from the network and stops it from the ability to spread and the technician has to decrypt using this and that method like yes those are all fantastic but like it's the even better people listening are like what i don't know what that means right right but like it's even better if you never have to use it yes like that's really what a lot of these things really come down to and so i mean we've covered such a like giant gambit of topics Janelle I want to be conscious of your time it's been great having you on the show so Janelle where can people find more about you our website's jclstrategies.ca we're on Instagram uh JCL Strategies, Facebook all the places and guys be sure to check out Janelle and it was so great getting to learn about you your organization and how frankly people can run a better company, which everybody wants, right? Like nobody says, I'm going to start a company. I'm going to be so stressed out. Yeah, right? It's it's like when people have children, no one's like, I want to have a teenager, right? It's like, they just want like the good parts without That's the like bad. I wanted a puppy and I wanted a cute puppy, but he keeps on biting me. And like, we could just skip to the good part. That'd be great. That's yeah. Fine. In my experience, I regretted my puppy until six months. Yes. So the last, yeah. Okay. So only I, that was my experience anyway. Like yep. day one, I was like, I think this was maybe not the best decision. Day yeah. two, it was like, ah, this really wasn't a good idea, was it? Maybe he'll, it, it was just like stuff you take for granted. Like I put a collar on him and tried to walk him and just like he didn't walk. It's just like, yeah. really you're going to let me drag you instead of no. just walking it's like i don't know how this life thing works I know. i've had to keep feeding them treats so they're not biting me or barking or like grabbing shoes from the entrance and bringing them to my living room my shoes are just on my kitchen counter at this point because my dog do they have breath. puppy breath when does that go away uh he doesn't really have puppy breath he smells like a puppy but his breath isn't terrible so uh, that's okay wait it's one of those like weird, like you can't describe it. like puppy breath is like its own thing, or at least in, in our terrors. But Janelle, it was so great talking to you. And you. guys, if you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like and share until next time. Thanks for listening to the Tech Talk for Accountants show. Thank you, Janelle. Thank you.